The Passat B6 has a lot of different engines, and they differ significantly in operation, but in general there are no common weaknesses. Is that the widespread use of plastic and fittings, rather high prices for various small things, which creates the prerequisites for collective farming. The main trouble with this generation of cars is that buyers had little idea of what a modern turbo engine is and how to maintain it, and the manufacturer has already actively applied all the tricks to reduce consumption and fit into emission and fuel consumption standards. In fact, the first owners of these machines acted as beta testers of raw technologies for their own money. It is enough to see how many revisions each type of motor has, the very letter designations of the engine model. And each modification is often changes in hardware, other components of the power and exhaust system, other control units, sensors, and actuators. Over the years, attempts to improve the unsuccessful lead to the creation of even more options, and this already creates difficulties in maintenance. Without disassembling the motor of the EA888 line, it is difficult to understand what kind of piston group is there, under what connecting rods, with what rings, what problems have been fixed, and which ones are worth waiting for. We wrote about these things in detail in articles about this series in the first and second parts. This is all true for all series of Passat engines, except for the simple 1.6 with distributed injection. The simplest motor, which is also the most reliable, is 1.6, the legendary BSE slash BSF. These are engines of the EA113 series in the simplest version, with an 8-valve cylinder head, one camshaft, hydraulic lifters, and a belt drive. Aluminum block, cast iron sleeves, chain-driven oil pump in the crankcase. The simplest design, where everything has been worked out for a long time and a little more lightened. Service does not get into them, except to change the belt, since there is nothing special to break. All the disadvantages are usually a consequence of the improvements of the EA113 series for installation specifically on the Passat B6. So, thinner rings on lightweight pistons with a long oil change interval, an unsuccessful choice of oil and urban operation are prone to occurrence and oil consumption. The crankcase ventilation system, VKG, is not very successful in principle and is prone to freezing in winter. Well, the rest of the time the plastic cover leaks and all the seals sweat. The exhaust manifold cracks frequently. Nozzles and coils are not very successful. The intake is heavily polluted by the VCG and the control system begins to act up. If you're lucky, the engine will pass 350 to 500,000 even in urban conditions with low oil consumption. If you're not lucky, then it will be reanimated for a penny. 102 horsepower for a Class D car is monstrously low, but if you value reliability and low operating costs, then this is a good choice. The MCP, however, as we have already said, is not very successful, but in extreme cases, it can be inexpensively replaced. There were options with 1.6 and automatic transmission, but this is an FSI direct injection engine of a completely different line EA111. It is made in a more compact aluminum block with cast iron sleeves, a timing chain drive, and a 16-valve cylinder head. We have a better known version of such a motor with conventional MPI injection. This is CFNA slash CFNB, which was installed on the Polo sedan at the beginning of the release. He is very noisy. Early timing versions have a short resource and are prone to jump due to the unsuccessful design of the tensioner and front cover. The crankshaft pulley is damper and weak. He has a not very successful piston, prone to knocking on the cold when shifting and overriding the cylinders. The liners are rather weak and sometimes crumble. You need to monitor the oil pressure and noise. The exhaust manifold cracks quite often. There are also exclusive problems of the FSI version. Here the high pressure fuel pump drive with erasable friction pairs and the high pressure fuel pump itself and the choice and adjustment of nozzles and injection are not very successful. Starting qualities in the cold are weak. It heats up very badly. It doesn't pull very well. It works hard. With new firmware and a replaced timing belt, this engine is a perfectly acceptable option, but it also really lacks power. At the same time, it is more difficult and more expensive to maintain than a more powerful 2-liter naturally aspirated engine. 
the resource depends on your luck. If the chain hasn't jumped and the cylinders haven't lifted, then it can reach the same 350,000 as the 8 valve. Two more representatives of the late EA113 line are the 2.0 FSI for 150 horsepower and the 2.0 TSI for 200 horsepower. Despite the same volume and belonging to the same series, the motors are very different. 2.0 FSI aluminum block and atmospheric. The block head is 16 valve. There is a phase regulator in the timing drive, implemented in the intermediate chain mechanism, but it is a regular vane, and not like the earlier 20 valves of this series, a tensioner. In addition, the engine has direct injection. There are quite a few motor options, BVX, BVY, BVZ, and others. Of these, negative 2 euro BVZ variants stand out, which have neither layer by layer mixing nor a storage catalyst. They are a little simpler than the others, and there is less trouble with them, but not much. These engines have four to five pieces of lambda probes alone, clusters of catalysts. In general, for 150 forces, they are excessively complex. The 2.0 FSI cylinder block does not have repair dimensions, but it is quite wear resistant. The piston group is lightweight and is prone to ring sticking already at mileage of over 100. If the rings are stuck, the cylinder will wear out quite quickly. The engine needs to be overhauled urgently. Fortunately, there are non-original pistons for thicker rings from supercharged engines, and if you install them in time, the engine will run for a long time. However, oil burn is often associated with leaks due to not very successful VKG and elevated operating temperatures, especially in negative 4 euro engine variants. The tank ventilation system is also capricious as a result of its failure, mixture formation is disrupted. The fact that BVY slash BVZ engines do not start in frosts of minus 15 is no secret. The problem can only be solved by a comprehensive engine upgrade with replacement of injectors and firmware. But that's not all. The 2.0 FSI has a very capricious EGR valve, but it's easy to turn it off. The plug is installed elementarily, and there are a lot of firmware without it. If you do not turn it off, then the chances of the occurrence of rings are maximum, and the intake will be heavily clogged with soot, and there will be just a fur coat on the valves. The inlet will simply hang up to the bend. With the new phase regulator, too, not everything is going smoothly. The service life of the sealing rings on the shaft is offensively short. They didn't even last for hundreds of thousands. Pressure leakage began until an error in phase regulation appeared. The blade mechanism itself is also far from eternal. After 150 to 200,000 runs, you have to buy a new one. You can order a set of blades and sort through them, but the result is unpredictable, and sometimes the chain star on the outside and the surface of the housing inside the phase regulator itself are simply worn out. At high mileage, camshafts already require attention. At the exhaust, it rubs the cams a little and the chain drive star wears out. At the intake, only the cams and the hexagon of the high-pressure fuel pump drive. The star is interchangeable in theory, but in practice, non-original stars go a little, and repressing them is a whole problem. The injection pump cam is also changed, but you still need to find a service specializing in such work. From the point of view of the power supply and management system, it's hell. The shape of the exhaust manifold, the location of the catalysts, the already mentioned bunch of lambdas. Fuel pressure sensors, old versions of the injection pump. In general, they usually cut it all out, change the old high-pressure fuel pump to a modern one through an adapter, put the roller in its drive and reflash the brains. At the same time, they put a cold thermostat, pistons under a slightly lower coolant, in order to fill in the 95th and not the 98th gasoline. Bringing the engine into a digestible form can turn out to be more expensive than a typical 1.8 TSI capital, since there you just need to change not very expensive and unique elements, but here there are a bunch of them. Let me remind you, this is still a dead and not moving 150 horsepower naturally aspirated engine. It would seem that the 200 horsepower 2.0 TSI should be even worse. But no, it is somewhat more logical and resourceful. His block is cast iron, although this does not save, because there are still no piston sizes. 
The piston engine is not prone to coking here, and if the pistons burn out, then not at stock power, but when 350 plus forces were removed from the engine and even unsuccessfully flashed. Its tuning potential is very good, better than the next generation. With the timing, the troubles are about the same as those of the atmospheric version, but here the operating temperature is slightly lower, and the operating speed is lower. This eliminates the problem with the camshafts, and the phase regulator seals last longer. Turbines and exhaust are not a model of reliability, but it's all inexpensive to change. In general, BPY and BWA engines are not in vain considered successful. Tuning fans are specifically looking for cars with them and even put EA888 instead. About the 1.8 TSI and 2.0 TSI engines of the EA888 family, which replaced the old 2-liter ones, we have already said above as the Passat B6 was released, they were constantly improved. In total, three generations of them came out, and the third, as of 2021, is still being produced. Generations can be distinguished by letter indices and power. 160 horsepower 1.8 TSI, BZB, is Gen 1, the very first and rare generation. You will be surprised, but they had no problems with the oil burner. They also had a piston almost like the old BWA engines. True, problems with the timing and balance shafts appeared on them early, and the fuel equipment turned out to be no less capricious than on the 2.0 FSI. In general, it turned out a little better than the previous series, but not by much. Gen 2 came out noticeably worse. The 152-160 horsepower 1.8 CDAB slash CDAA slash CGYA and the 200 horsepower 2.0 CCTA, CBFA and CCZA turned out to be better only because they rebuilt the control systems. The timing was modified slightly and not immediately, and which is very sad, most versions have added a strong oil burner already it runs from 40 to 50,000. To a lesser extent, this applies to late release 1.8 CGYA slash CGYB engines, which have already received an upgraded piston. For 2 liter engines, problems with the piston group are at first glance less pronounced, but there are more problems with the timing resource. Gen 3, the most successful version of the EA888, which has a more stable timing resource and oil appetite is an order of magnitude less common, cannot be found in stock on the Passat B6, they began to be installed later, only during the release of the B7 generation. Sadly, but bolt-on to put the Gen 3 slash Gen 3B assembly instead of Gen 2 is too difficult, expensive, and troublesome. It is quite difficult to avoid a major overhaul with the replacement of a piston with an oil burner on EA888 Gen 1 slash 2 engines. Many trade winds have already completed this repair, but the quality is unknown. Inspect the engine more carefully for intake fogging and oil leaks. Don't count on decarbonization from the occurrence of rings, it doesn't always help. Someone uses too weak compositions, and there is no effect, someone is too vigorous and gets a lot of problems with the timing, and in fact the engine is still sent for overhaul. Read more about EA888 modifications and their typical problems in a separate article. The 1.4 TSI engines with 122 horsepower from the Caxa EA111 line are very similar to the 1.6 FSI, but better. Firstly, they are more powerful and have more torque, 220 to 250 newton meters of torque, this is already quite enough to keep the car moving. Here the oil pressure is higher, the operating temperature is lower, there are no problems with the piston at a power of up to 150 forces, and besides, the block is cast iron. It is not only stronger, but also retains heat longer and creates less noise. There remains a failed timing belt, but it has almost certainly already been replaced with a modified one. Supercharging here, of course, is complicated, but there are no unsolvable problems. The operation of the intercooling system in the new firmware has become better. It carefully monitors the temperature and, in case of malfunctions in the operation of the electric pump, leaks in the main circuit of the cooling system and contamination of the heat exchanger, it greatly reduces power without creating conditions for damage to the piston group. 
Cracks in the hot part of the turbine and souring of the drive are still a very common problem, but services are good at diagnosing this kind of trouble. Of the unresolved minuses, very poor engine warm-up remains, and here only the installation of heaters, autonomous heating systems, or a hairdryer in the air conditioning unit can help. The total resource of the piston group for 1.4 engines is no less than that of 1.6, and they are able to pass their 300 plus thousand quite easily if they do not make fatal mistakes. By the way, a funny nuance with spare parts. It turns out that non-original radiators for 1.4 often have communicating circuits, main and intercooler, which leads to very poor heating of the engines and severe overheating of the charge air. Such a motor is a very smart choice if you have a good service for this generation of machines at hand and maximum efficiency is important to you. Cars with it are underestimated, since there is also a DSG DQ200 box, and most of the problems of such a bundle are now easily solved. With traction and sound, these engines of the EA390 line definitely have no problems, in any case, until the intake is overgrown with soot. And the real power is not 250 and 290 forces, but less, this is typical of atmospheric engines, but still there will be good even traction from the very bottom. In addition, engines are indifferent to the quality of gasoline, in the summer it is not necessary to pour the 98th, the 95th is also suitable. The motor will not lose dynamics, and there will be no detonation at all, except perhaps a couple of times on a hot summer day in traffic jams. Of course, there are downsides. For example, the overall layout complexity, not only everyone can sort out such an engine. But the resource is good, well over 350,000. The timing on the flywheel side lasts longer than the old VR6, but still every 150 to 200,000 you have to be ready to throw off the automatic transmission to replace the dampers and the chains themselves, although there are chances that they will last longer. Coils do not last very long. It is better to put red ones strictly original or NGK. Do not buy used coils of the first series. They have been revised a lot. The problems with the resource are more pronounced in the early ones. The VCG must be monitored carefully. A torn membrane instantly pollutes the intake valves, and cleaning the intake from carbon deposits after that is not a cheap pleasure. But this must be done regularly to ensure that the engines breathe deeply. After 60 to 80,000 mileage, the intake valves are already overgrown, and on cars with mileage, it is more worthwhile to look at their condition with an endoscope. A loose piece of soot can lead to scuffing, so cleaning should be done only by proven methods, with the removal of the collector and mechanical cleaning. Various compositions are highly not recommended. The fuel equipment is also capricious, especially on the early 3.2 engine. All the problems with pusher wear, unstable pressure are here too. Well, the engines have a solid appetite for gasoline, one and a half times higher than that of 2.0 TFSI. All in all, a great motor. Another plus, it is not only resourceful, but also cheap. There were a lot of them in Japan and a bunch of low mileage engines at a price less than the EA888 are waiting for them to get under the hood again. At the time of its release, the Passat was equipped with diesel engines with unit injectors from the EA188 generation with a volume of 1.9 and 2.0 liters in versions with 8 and 16 valve cylinder heads, and closer to the end of production they were replaced by the EA189 generation with common rail injection. There are no frankly bad engines in the line, except perhaps the 16-valve EA188 with early cylinder heads, more on them below. All have a good piston group life, low consumption, good traction, successful layout. All are well tuned to 140 or 170 horsepower, then usually the turbine needs to be replaced and the fuel equipment needs to be modified. In general, the diesel engine in the Passat B6 is a practical choice, but somewhat less comfortable than gasoline engines. The price of diesel cars remains at a fairly high level, and this is not surprising. 1.9 liter engines are strictly 8 valve with pump nozzles, and their main problems are wear on the hexagon of the oil pump drive, wear on the camshaft cams, and, in fact, the pump nozzles themselves, including damage to the nozzle wells in the cylinder head. 
There are enough minor difficulties, with an exhaust manifold, an inlet overgrown with soot, the vagaries of VGT turbine systems, vacuum, motor wiring, etc. But all this is repaired very budget and often does not break. In general, these are good motors with a resource of under 500,000, it is only desirable to find a good service for servicing pump injectors. Motors 2.0 of this generation come in two versions, 8 and 16 valve. 16 valve BKD slash BKP slash BMR slash BRE engines are not the best choice. An error in the design of the cylinder head has made almost all options prone to cracking, and a more complex EGR and the presence of a particulate filter on a number of options make the life of the owner even more difficult. Of the benefits, a better start and more stable operation in the cold. But the power here is no more than that of the 8 valve options. The top 170 horsepower BMRs also have unique pump injectors with a piezo valve, which are very capricious and very expensive. If ordinary pump injectors are now being restored quite well and used kits are not very expensive, then even new piezo ones after a rebuild are expensive. Sometimes, however, they fall under a recall company and they are replaced with regular electromagnetic ones for free. Early series 2.016V have a problem with the hexagon, as do 1.9 engines. 2.0 with 8 valves of the BMM slash BMP series are essentially similar in every way to 1.9 engines, but have a more complex intake in glow plugs, and BMM engines also have piezoelectric pump injectors. But, like BMR engines, there are chances that they will be replaced by a recall or have already been replaced by a much more reliable revision. The cylinder head is still more delicate than that of the 1.9 and is less resistant to overblowing, incorrect injection timing, and similar problems. But the camshafts last longer, and many engines had a new hexagon from the factory. However, you will still have to check the latter personally. The 2.0 diesel engines of the EA189 line with common rail differ from their predecessors primarily in their fuel equipment. But the cylinder head here is strictly 16 valve, and it has been modified, cracks are much less common. Checking the expansion tank after warming up for the presence of gases is still required. Mostly on the Passat there is a CBAB engine with 140 horsepower. The disadvantages are that it mainly comes with first-generation piezo injectors. They are quite capricious and do not like overheating at all. But under normal conditions, they have no problems with service life. They last longer and are more stable than electromagnetic ones. The glow plugs are quite capricious. The EGR gets dirty faster here, and the turbine geometry becomes heavily overgrown with soot. But overall, this is a good engine, although in comparison with the 8-valve 1.9 TDI it loses in everything except starting qualities, warm-up speed, vibration load, and, in general, freshness. At first, the Passat's braking system had two famous problems, an unsuccessful ABS firmware, which released the wheels too much on slippery roads, and an expensive unreliable motorized parking brake. The ABS for the most part was reflashed a long time ago, but if suddenly not, then now, if the work of the ABS does not suit you, it is easy to fix it, there are a lot of firmware and specialists. As for the handbrake, the price of a motor drive in a non-original design has fallen to the cost of a set of good pads, and the body of even a Chinese drive has become stronger. The main trouble with the original mechanisms is the cracking of the body at the junction with the caliper and corrosion of both the gear motor and the drive hexagon. The handbrake caliper with a screw mechanism serves quite reliably the electric drive covers the main weak spot of this design. The main thing here is to prevent long-term operation with a depressurized drive gear motor. Water in the cavity will finish off the housing and the stuffing box very quickly. Working brakes are good. The front discs, even with weak motors, have a diameter of 312 mm, while the 2.0 TSI and VR6 versions have as much as 345 mm. A single piston caliper with a floating caliper, everything is very impressive, efficient, and at the same time simple, it does not cause any extra trouble. By the age of 10, you usually need to replace all the caliper rubbers and fingers and forget for another 10 years.
At the rear, the discs are also quite impressive, 282mm for most versions and 310mm for the top ones. For the rest, it only needs to be noted that on older cars, the brake fluid was often not changed on time, and you can find both corrosion of the rear brake pipes and swollen hoses. Therefore, when buying or after, you should carefully check the condition of these elements. With the reliability of suspensions, the Passat B6 is generally doing well. Largely because they are simple, well mastered in repair, and services have learned not to make fatal mistakes. As practice shows, the mileage ceiling of the original front suspension in Moscow conditions turned out to be higher than 300,000. Before this run, only the struts, anti-roll bar bushings, and rear silent blocks of the front arm will definitely die for a good driver. Under less greenhouse conditions, earlier replacements are possible. There are cars on which the front springs burst from corrosion to 150 to 200,000. They usually change immediately along with the thrust bearings and shock absorbers, which usually also lose their effectiveness during intensive use. A sagging spring with a guarantee kills the rear arm silent. The ball joints are very reliable, and they change separately from the levers, and the front silent lever costs a penny and changes as a set with the rear just in case. The owners note that the adapted suspension of the Bad Road Package, PPD, options for Russian trade winds, is more common with broken coils of springs. The mentioned rear silent of the front arm is one of the main reasons for the suspension bulkhead. In the original version, it is sold together with a massive aluminum bracket or as an insert, and therefore many non-original elements are only available as a silent insert. Pay attention to what is actually installed inside the licensed part. Over time, the seat is weakened, and the breakdown of the bracket itself is not so rare. But in general, there are no problems with spare parts, they are cheap and widely available, including even reinforced ones. To strengthen the weak spot, they often put a continuous silent from S3 slash RS3, including in the form of a non-original insert. On the Passat, such tuning does not cause a complete loss of comfort, as on the lighter Golf slash Octavia, but it also dramatically increases the transmission of noise and vibration to the body. Experienced users have long noted that the life of the silent depends primarily on the condition of the springs and the accuracy of the midpoint installation. Just in case, I remind you that when replacing suspension elements, you only need to tighten the connections under full load, and when repressing a non-original silent, you need to take into account the position it is asymmetrical and is usually designed for the height of the original working suspension, and not for a sagging or high ground PPD suspension. So, first of all, eliminate all related problems and only then engage in strengthening. It is better to do this at a service that is well acquainted with Volkswagens. They often complain about the wear of the hex shank of the original lever, but with a normally tightened nut, there is no play in this connection, and the hex serves rather for convenience in setting the initial suspension preload. There are more wear elements in the rear suspension, and the main problem in the form of weak springs manifests itself more strongly, since the range of load changes on the rear axle is higher. Errors of repairmen are more often shown also. Alas, many services do not read manuals, which means they are not aware that the original trailing arm silent block is fitted in the maximum will reach position, but for non-original parts the recommendations may be different, including installation strictly in the working position. The main wear elements are both upper arm bushings, the trailing arm bushing, and the outer lower arm bushing. The S-W trailing arm wears out mainly when there are problems with the spring or high load, especially in a combination of high load and bad roads. The silent blocks of the upper U-shaped lever knock even with slight wear, and the outer one is prone to fraying of the rubber part under increased loads. The external S-W support arm is also one of the first to give up when the load is increased. On average, repairs begin at runs of 100 to 150,000, with the installation of reinforced springs and careful assembly, almost all elements serve the same amount, and the suspension cannot be called problematic if the repair was done in a service that does not neglect the instructions.
sagging old springs, violation of assembly technologies, tons of ubiquitous copper grease that got on the rubber elements, and an unsuccessful selection of spare parts are the main problems due to which the rear suspension on cross-country cars begins to require control at almost every MOT. Of the unusual weak points, one can note the corrosion of the bolts of the trailing arm to the knuckle and a fairly high load on the subframe S-B, we must not forget to check them. Prior to 2006 the rear subframe was aluminum and is very prone to sour fasteners, on early machines be prepared to replace it. Steering with the Euro as a whole is a reliable thing, its main problem is breakdowns due to leakage of the rack and water ingress, as well as failures of the torque sensor in the control unit. The first and second generation ZF rails were installed on the B6 on a regular basis. They are quite reliable and most replacements for the third generation rails or APA rails produced by Volkswagen itself are needed to implement some additional functionality or simply because they are newer. The replacement has been established, the encodings are known, the connectors are being sold. Not all mounting holes match, but even some of the bolts can be fixed quite securely. The main problems of the first and second generation racks are the actual breakdown of the torque sensor, failures due to corrosion, and knocking noises due to sticking of the clamping piston. Other problems are very, very rare. The design is simple, and maintainability is limited only by the lack of major components for sale new. Contrary to popular belief, the Eisen automatic transmission is not the most reliable gearbox. The 5-speed manual is quite fragile. The 6-speed gearbox has a very delicate dual-mass flywheel, and DSG shifters may actually be a preferable option. True, 10 years ago the situation was somewhat worse. Eisen was considered the most reliable and for the most part still alive. The DSG-7 of the Dry DQ200 series broke down often and expensively, and no one knew how to install the wet DQ250, and it cost space money. As a result, now we see a funny situation with repairs and replacements of boxes when different groups of owners evaluate the merits of cars in very different ways. For some, the combination of 1.8 and DQ200 is optimal because it is economical, inexpensive, and in which case you can put the DQ250 or even the DQ500 wet DSG7 for powerful machines quite easily. And someone appreciates the 2.0 FSI with Eisen, let it not go, but it has already been repaired, the cooling has been finalized, and all problem areas have been replaced, so there is a chance that it will go like this for a very long time. In general, it is difficult to give an unambiguous assessment. You need to understand the nuances of typical problems and look at each specific instance for how these typical problems were solved or not solved. Basically, six speed boxes of the MQ250 and MQ350 series were installed here, and with a 1.6 engine, with a 1.4 TSI, with atmospheric 2.0 FSI and junior 1.9 diesel engines, they installed five speed boxes of the MQ250-5F series and absolutely old MQ200-5F-0AH JGU models. The most problematic option is just the last one. It does not even hold the moment of a weak atmospheric 1.6 about 8 valves, which is usually found with the bearings and differential are rather weak here. It is necessary to regularly change the dual bearing, and most likely the rest. Other 5 steps are quite good for themselves, besides, there is an ordinary monolithic flywheel, which reduces the cost of operating the machine. The only exception, with 1.9 diesels, dual mass flywheels still came across, they were installed for a very limited time. Now a set from luck for such a motor is offered both two mass and single mass, and the price of a two mass flywheel is very low and amounts to the same 28,000 as for a monolith. Six speed boxes are all as strong as the selection, and the main trouble is just a two mass flywheel. Constant traffic jams and pull and movement, harsh handling of the clutch greatly reduced the resource of the assembly. This is not to say that this is an unambiguous big drawback, but when buying, one must take into account the likelihood of repair. Otherwise, the boxes are quite reliable, without obvious problems with the resource of the differential, synchronizers, and forks. 
The looseness of the switching mechanism at runs over 200 is rather a rule, but rarely does anyone change all worn out elements for new ones to restore the normal selectivity of the mechanism. There are a lot of gearboxes on the Passat B6. First of all, these are 6-speed Eisen TF60SC. They are presented here in two versions, AQ250 for engines up to 2 liters and AQ450 for more torque. The more powerful version has more differences in the differential, reinforced planetary gear, and more clutches in the packages. Otherwise, the boxes are completely identical, and they generally have common problems. But due to the fact that they cost with different motors and work with different loads slash temperatures, the final resource can vary greatly. We have already written about these boxes in detail in a separate article. The best options are from cars with VR6 3.6 or 2.0 FSI from the USA, which had a regular box radiator and not just a heat exchanger. But the bulk of the radiator boxes do not have, and in the version with heat exchangers, they suffer from severe overheating, aging of rubber elements, oil, and similar problems associated with them. The valve body, traditionally for Eisen, is very sensitive to oil contamination, and its rare replacement has a detrimental effect on it. The usual service life according to regulations on the Passat B6 is about 120,000 kilometers. This is due to the high temperature of the most common 2.0 FSI and 1.8 TSI engines with which these boxes were installed, and the high temperature of the automatic transmission, the cooling system of which is connected to the engine. Of course, the box itself potentially has a good resource with a quiet operation. With a decrease in operating temperature and frequent oil changes, it quietly serves 300 plus thousand before the first repairs. But few people bother in advance to install an external radiator and filter, as well as a regular oil change every 30 to 40,000. Usually, attempts to reduce the temperature of the box occur after the first call and consist in the simplest things like removing the automatic transmission thermostat, cleaning the heat exchanger, and changing the oil. Unfortunately, in this case, the chances of getting by with a little bloodshed are already minimal. Because fresh oil will not restore the flexibility of the rubber elements, it will not remove debris and wear. Repair of Eisen boxes is quite expensive. This automatic transmission wears out slowly. The process can take several years, but in a complex manner, requiring the replacement of the entire clutch package and most of the steel discs, the restoration of the gas turbine engine, the repair of the valve body, and often also the replacement of the oil pump and planetary gears. The satellite axes are rather weak, and shock switching quickly puts marks on the drum bodies. The situation is complicated by the fact that, unlike ZF, Eisen in Russia does not have a full-fledged representative office with a proprietary service where it would be possible to diagnose hydraulic units and repair units with a guarantee. ASINs are repaired in multi-brand services, in fact, whoever knows how. They are expensive, and a positive result is not at all guaranteed. The second most popular transmission on the Passat B6 is the pre-selective DQ200 with dry clutches and version 0AM, the very first revision. Many copies were broken about its design, and after 2012 it was replaced by the 0CW version, which managed to turn from an ugly duckling into a normal duck, if not a swan. We wrote about this evolution in great detail. First of all, it is worth noting that all the problems with the mechatronics were solved in mass by mastering its repair. They repair the bursting body, strengthen the accumulator, wiring, pump, restore and change the control unit. Problems with the forks, due to which the mechanical part of the box was damaged, were completely solved by replacing the design with a ballless one. This even if it breaks, then no solid elements will get into the gears. Weak shaft bearings and differential remain, as well as wear on the dual mass flywheel, but with normal driving style and oil level, the box is quite reliable in this regard. And when tuning or driving too aggressively, it is better to change it to something more durable. Because the main advantage of such an automatic transmission is efficiency, and the manufacturers stop trying to impress with dynamics, now the box switches more slowly, but it breaks less often. 
The rarer DQ250 with wet clutches in version 02E is found mainly with diesel engines, less often with 2.0 TSI slash VR6 or as a result of replacement. It is initially more reliable than the DQ200 due to the use of clutches in an oil bath and a mechanical drive of the oil pump, more proven solutions from conventional automatic transmissions, lower peak loads during switching and purification of the mechatronics working fluid in the filters. At the same time, there are plenty of typical breakdowns, metal chips on the hall sensors, and early wear of the clutch solenoids, and dead fork tips during 150 plus city runs, and worn out mechatronics with a rare oil and filter change, and dead input shaft bearings, and breakdowns of the oil pump from due to vibrations from the dual mass flywheel. Bearings and differentials remain a fairly serious problem with this automatic transmission, but often the cause is overload during tuning. The main reason for many serious failures is the poor choice of the input shaft ball bearing. SKF offered an option that was too weak and leaky. As a result, from the extra load due to a faulty dual mass flywheel and the ingress of chips, which are always present in the oil, he was dying. All the first revisions of the gearbox on the Passat B6 have problems with the bearing life, and for many units it has already been replaced with a reinforced one. It is also better to change the rest of the bearings out of harm's way and carefully monitor the knocks of the dual mass flywheel. The differential must be strengthened if the motor has more than 350 newton meters of torque, more than 300 horsepower, power and regular starts with gas to the floor are supposed. The choice of reinforced differentials is very wide. With accessories for tuning on the Passat, in general, everything is very good. The remaining problems are more likely to be associated with a rare oil change and design. The wet clutch, and in fact just a typical large friction clutch, is heavily loaded in this automatic transmission and feeds both very small steel chips and more traditional paper wear products into the system. Steel waste must be filtered and settled on numerous magnets, including on forks and in a pallet, but in practice they come across everywhere, settle on the magnetized sections of the shafts near the hall sensors, scratch the solenoids and settle on them. With a rear oil and filter change, the problem manifests itself very contrastingly, and if the car was annealed, forcing the clutch to slip for a long time, then the box is killed quickly enough. First of all, clutch lock solenoids suffer, and due to the deterioration in the accuracy of their work, clutch wear increases even more. Hence such a big difference in reliability assessment. For some, the boxes go for 350000 before the first minor repairs with the replacement of fork tips and sensors, while for someone, up to 100000 they already require replacement of the clutch and bearing package. Add trouble and rather strange algorithms. In normal mode, there are a lot of unnecessary shifts, including rather hard engine braking in first gear, the quality of which drops off with mileage. The box works great with diesel engines, where the temperature is lower, there is no chance of overheating of both the box and the clutch pack, the pack discs lead a little when overheated, and, importantly, the operation mode is calm. With gasoline engines, the situation depends too much on the temperament of the driver and maintenance. The DQ250 box is being repaired, but so far the number of serviceable used ones and their low price make a major repair not a particularly popular option. In case of serious breakdowns, the box is simply replaced as an assembly since the manufacturer does not supply new spare parts for the mechanical part of the gearbox. Well, good maintenance for this box is to regularly change the oil and filter to control its temperature and vibrations. Oil should be changed as often as possible, once every 30,000 for gasoline cars and high load this is even too rare. The filter should be changed simply at every MOT once every 10,000 kilometers. Fortunately, this is a simple operation. When installing an external radiator, the installation of a centrifugal sump filter is highly recommended. It filters heavy steel particles very effectively, better than magnets. An oil temperature over 100 degrees for a box is a bad sign. In this case, not only the resource of numerous plastic elements, including the inclusion forks, is deteriorating, but the chances of local overheating of the clutch packs and damage to the plastic elements of the box mechanics also increase. With runs over 150,000, the condition of the heat exchanger is usually poor, 
It is heavily clogged with box where products and needs to be replaced. Special attention should be paid to temperatures in urban driving. Another big plus when buying is that the box is well diagnosed. You can see at what temperatures it worked, the strokes of the clutch forks, assess the expected wear of the friction clutches by adaptations and the condition of the clutch solenoids. In general, the chances of buying a pig in a poke in comparison with Eisen are significantly less. Angular gearboxes and gearboxes are all quite reliable, only with serious tuning there are risks of damage to the housing and shafts. The second generation Haldux clutch is also a pretty strong thing, but it requires regular oil changes and is ineffective at low speeds. The electric pump simply does not create the necessary preload. For patency on loose soils, this is important, in other cases not very much. To improve handling and patency, the clutch is sometimes changed to more modern versions, usually to Haldux 4 there the speed is higher, and the price of the clutches is low. Installation on a machine on the PQ46 platform is not a problem, since such clutches were installed on Tiguan, as well as Passat B7 and CC. The sixth Passat is just the case when the body metal is good and galvanized, it is also well painted, but the result is not at all guaranteed. In a relatively dry climate, the car has a chance for excellent safety.